All right, folks. Well, there is a lot happening at Orleton Manor. Um, this is a rather cold and horrible January day, but the sun is actually trying to come out. And what we're going to do, there's a lot going to happen here over the next two or three days. And as you can see, the roof is looking rather exposed. And what I'm going to do is pass you on to Jake, Jake Oakley, who is the lead timber framer in charge of this huge project now. Um, and Jake's going to take us through what is going to happen. So without much further ado, I think I'm just going to Hello. let Jake talk us through things. Right, so yeah, you've got a little, a little snapshot of the roof there. So we might have noticed there's quite big sections of wall plate missing. Uh, that's because it was pretty much a patchwork quilt of historical repairs and failures and snaps and all sorts of things. So they have come out and we will be replacing with a new wall plate. Uh, to replace the new the, with a new wall plate, we need to lift the roof structure off. Let's take the trusses off, take the purlins off, put the wall plates on, and sit the trusses into the into the joinery on the wall plates. Um, so yeah, it's been uh, quite a quite a journey to get to this point. We've been here for quite a few months making the walls good. I'm sure you might have noticed quite a few repairs to the the wall on this side, and we've had a lot of repairs on the courtyard side. The new sole plates going in, large uh, scarf repairs on principal posts. So yeah, there's a lot of work that's gone in over the last, well, the last year I've been here now, uh, getting to this phase where we can actually take the roof off and do the adequate repairs that we need to do. Um, so yeah, the next couple of days, uh, Crane is here tomorrow. We'll start by lifting the purlins off, uh, stacking them, and then taking the trusses. We've got a couple of absolutely massive purlins on the back side that actually span um, four of the cross frames, which I think they're probably the longest purlins I've ever seen. They're about 10, 11 meters long. Uh, and there's two of them. I think what they did, they just chopped down a great big tree, split it down the middle, squared <laughs> it up, and had it for purlins. Wow. No idea how they got them up there. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, Brilliant. It's, it's quite a thing. So yeah, we'll be lifting those off delicately. Uh, with four slings, <laughs> don't want to risk uh, risk any of them snapping. So that will probably be most of tomorrow, getting that lot off. Um, got some quite major repairs to do on the hip end as well, as the wall plate. Um, we've got a dragon tie, very large dragon tie, tie in the corner back to the main frame. Um, I think the beam itself is over six meters long and about 350 deep. Uh, so a huge timber that uh, has snapped, it's, uh, it's ruptured, so we need to put a steel flitch plate in there. Um, so that's going to be quite a big job on this, on this, on this end here. Uh, and then reinstating all the hip rafters, principal rafters and purlins on that end. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of work in that, in that hip end to make that good again. Um, so yeah. I should say to everybody that um as you said earlier, Jake, you, you've already been here for a year. Um, so um, part of the problem from my viewpoint with this place was that a lot of this damage that we're finding now um, is or was invisible. You couldn't even tell. Uh, the wall plate that we see or don't see up here, if I just uh, zoom in on the what's left of it, uh, you can see a wall plate there and then there is nothing left of it. There's a huge open gap there where the wall plates disappeared and that wall plate was covered by uh, two chimneys I think wasn't it? Two chimneys yeah. yeah and you had quite a big overhang on the eaves as well which was hiding a lot from the ground. We did have the garden room structure here so actually getting up there it took a long time before we could get up there and really dive into yeah. into it. <clears throat> As is often the case with these old frames, you can look at the the face of it, but you're only seeing a flat two-dimensional image, and they're all obviously three-dimensional timbers. So 
what you can see on the outside isn't always true all the way through the timber. Yeah. It's, uh, and then he started finding bits of it and putting your hand through it. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly <laughs> that. God. Uh, <clears throat> right, so shall we go up onto the roof and maybe you can show us some of the, the timbered in close up and yeah, yeah. what the lads are actually doing to get ready for the crane because I think yeah. um, right now we've got a structure that is um, tell me if I'm wrong but we're, we're pulling pegs and we're um, just bolting other sections together so it'd be interesting to see what they're doing to prepare for that right let's go climb the top and we'll yeah. start again on top <laughs> 